Welcome. This is Stephen Harris, and this is the Harris English Learning Podcast. Full disclosure, I am not a wizard. I have no tricks to make your language learning easy. However, if you are mastering English and you really want to engage life while doing it, well then, join me and let's experience the adventure together. I was 15 years old and my friend invited me on a camping trip. I should have said no. I should have said no because the only camping experience I had ever had was sleeping in a warm trailer. But where we were going, a two-week canoe journey in the middle of nowhere Canada, there were grizzly bears, cougars, and dangerous things hiding, well, hiding everywhere. The day arrived, and we launched our canoes. Day one was so beautiful. Canoeing on a lake and rivers through huge mountains. Hey, hey, I love camping. Day two, day three, they were pretty good too. Yeah, sure, my body was sore and the, the dehydrated food tasted like an old leather belt. But it was nothing I couldn't handle. But about a week into the journey, that handle snapped. Soggy, soaking wet running shoes kept me freezing cold during the day. A cheap, useless sleeping bag kept me shaking in those frosty nights. I just wanted to be in my warm bed at home. It wasn't long after that that my friend's dad, who was also on the trip, said that he had a surprise for everybody. And everyone froze. Eyebrows raised, staring carefully. Pulls out a plain plastic bag and it's full of delicious chocolate. Chocolate in the middle of nowhere. Sure, I was freezing, but I bit into that chocolate and I was all warm inside. It was flavor ecstasy. That chocolate gave me an adrenaline kick of motivation that kept me smiling the rest of the day. This is a lot what it feels like when you're starting a new language. Things are enjoyable in the beginning, but it's that long, messy middle part where your energy, your inspiration, your motivation kind of disappears, and you just want to quit. And some do, but some don't. But what if there was a, a hidden stash of chocolate that could help us keep moving forward, to inspire us to keep paddling, so to speak? There is, you know. In fact, there are many little delicious secrets that can help us sustain language mastery. But today, I'd like to focus on just one energy source that can sustain your language learning. And then I'd like to tell you why finding this source is so important to your mastery of English. And finally, I'd like to tell you how to activate this energy source. So, without further ado, let me introduce one rich source of energy to help you sustain language mastery. One second, I'll just get it here. Oh, here it is. Just gonna unwrap it here. One second. Come here. Come here. There we go. I'm here. I'm gonna pop this into my mouth here when I go. Oh man. Oh man. That is am that is amazing. Oh man. I'm sucking here. What? When is this chocolate? No. No. Ah, here it is. Oh, it's called Connection. My dictionary defines connection as, and I quote, a relationship 
in which a person, thing, or idea is linked or associated with something else. So let's shave this down to its bare minimum. It would go something like this. Connection is two things linked. Now, these two things are relating, uh, interacting, communing with each other. So, in regards to language learning, one of those things is going to be you. And the other thing is going to be whatever interests you. So, perhaps we could think of it like a river, and there are two towns on either side of the river. Now, you are one of those towns. All right? And the other town is whatever interests you. So, here we are. We're standing on our side of the river, and we're standing on our tippy toes, and we're looking across the other side of the river, and, and lo and behold, we see a, a little town, and it's full of our interest. It's, it's, it's got bright, colorful lights, energy, sounds, music, laughing, and all those great things. And you think to yourself, okay, so wow. I'd like to go there, but the river is pretty fast, pretty strong. I can't swim it, so... How do I get there? Well, that's easy. You build a bridge. And now we have the bridge, the link. That's language. The language is a bridge, a link. And it completes this connection. It completes this connection to all those people and hobbies, movies, books that we find so captivating. And that brings us to our second point which is, why is this connection so important? Why is it so important to connect ourselves to our interests? For that, I have three words, time and trains. Does Tokyo have a lot of trains? Yes, it's nuts. About 20 million people a day ride the trains in Tokyo. A day. Now, in two days, that's more than the population of my home country, Canada. Now, walking through the busiest train station in the world is, is actually pretty cool. As long as you're not in a hurry. I'm talking about Shinjuku. But, getting on a train at Shinjuku Station and sitting on that train is boring. Now granted, if it's a rush hour, it's not boring, it's terrifying, and sometimes crushingly painful. However, in the non-rush hour times, it's pure boredom. It's as if time stops. But, do that exact same trip with a good friend, and our very perception of time changes. Literally. I'm laughing, complaining, reminiscing, reminiscing uh, listening carefully. Uh, you know, all those great things. Right up to the moment when I see the doors close and realize that was my stop. What happened here? Why did that boring trip suddenly become so engaging? and uh, So much so that I, I forgot to get off the train. Well, I'll give you a hint. Think of Albert Einstein, and time, and relativity. That's the power of connection. It, it makes us sustain activity longer. The connection tricks us into investing lavish amounts of time and energy into maintaining the connection. And this uh, emotional connection has almost a, a magical quality of accelerating time, so much so that we don't even realize how much time and energy we're, we're putting into the process. We, we actually want to invest the energy into the process. And the process can even energize us. And how this is brilliant for language acquisition is that even if we're weak in the language or weak in that particular subject of the language, the connection inspires us to build a stronger, better language bridge. You know, anything for a better chocolatey connection. But there's a secret. Shh. The language isn't important. I mean, sure, yeah, it's, it's, it's of some importance, but it's no more important than a bridge. 
when we're crossing that bridge to see all those colorful, beautiful experiences on the other side, we're not focused on the bridge, right? We're, we're focused on the experience. We want to connect with what we crave. And yet, the better we build that language bridge, the more richer we experience this connection. But building this language bridge is a serious feat of language learning engineering. Serious. It takes a huge amount of time and energy. And that's why the connection is so important. The connection sustains language learning. It activates our emotions. It gives us boosts of warm emotional energy to push us, to energize us, to inspire us, to force us through those cold, rainy days when we just want to quit. Hmm. Warm, sweet, delicious connection. Sounds pretty good. Now we get to the small print. The details, the nitty gritties, so to speak. How exactly do we go about making these emotional connections? Well, fortunately, it's simple. Let me explain. Do you live in a native English-speaking country? Perfect. And you live in a giant salad bar of English-speaking opportunity. I mean, choose your preference, right? I mean, be creative. Do you like books? You go to a book club meeting. Do you like playing sports? Go to a community center to play sports. Every moment is dripping with opportunities to engage life with the language. You just reach out and take it. Yeah, you have to be courageous. You have to be brave. You have to be prepared to make mistakes and look silly. When I moved to small town Japan, I ended up joining a kabuki theater. Uh, it's traditional Japanese theater. And wow, did I ever look like an idiot sometimes. When I moved to big town Tokyo, I ended up singing in a community choir. And sure, I stuck out like a sore thumb. I was 20, 30, 40 years younger than everyone else. But the experiences in the theater and the choir were, were absolutely fantastic. And my opportunities for connection with the people and the art was just absolutely fantastic. But wait, I hear someone saying, Steve, I don't live in an English-speaking country. I can't build these connections. And, you know, that is a very valid excuse. A hundred years ago. But not now, right? I mean, there's a digital salad bar sitting in your hand. Right? It's called a smartphone and the internet. And it is a buffet of opportunity. Well, look for yourself. There are Facebook pages for everything. What do you like? You want to talk about soccer? Well, there's a community for that. Do you want to play chess? Well, there are communities for that. And I haven't even begun to mention the media buffet that everyone can access. I saw a movie. Uh, it was called The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. And yes, I loved it. I even visited the temple where Ken Watanabe and Tom Cruise filmed their temple scenes. Now, I have a little bit of a confession to make. I had a little crush on the lead actress. Her name was Ko Yuki. Now, it was before I was married, so it was legal. But Ko Yuki, she made a 12-part drama. It was called Kimi wa Petto, which could be translated, I guess, as You Are a Pet. And that's a weird name, I know. But it was a great drama. And uh, it totally hooked me. I couldn't stop watching it. I, I couldn't stop studying, really. I was searching the words, writing them down, memorizing them, uh, speaking them, repeating them. Uh, anything, everything I needed just to understand the next episode. And it just happened so easily. Now, notice, though, I wasn't even connecting with another person. I didn't even need to be in Japan. 
It was an emotional connection to a TV drama. But it completely hooked me. I loved it, and I studied it, and it injected energy into my language learning journey. So then, I ask you again, what do you like? What's your hobby? What's your interest? Whether you live or don't live in an English-speaking country, you just find it, be courageous and connect with it, and just enjoy the warm, delicious connection. So, what did we look at today? We looked at one almost magical energy source that can sustain language learning, a connection. We looked at why this connection helps us sustain mastery, and, and the reason was that connection becomes emotional, and the emotions are a deep energy source that can help us, well, will make us work harder and longer study harder and longer. Finally, we looked at how to activate this energy source. And for that, you need to be intentional and chase your interests. And of course, you have to be courageous. So, there you have it. Enjoy your language mastery journey. But we're not naive, are we? We know it's long and the rain and the winds will come. And in those moments when you just want to quit, remember, reach for some chocolate, a little bit of connection, and enjoy. And to be honest, I hope that this podcast can be one of those little pieces of chocolate to help you with your English mastery. If you'd like to join, then please do. Every month I'll be posting a new episode. And if you'd like to get a transcript of the podcast, then by all means, head to harris-english.com, fill in your first name and email address, and every month, the day I release the podcast, I'll send you a transcript for you to look over and help you prepare for the upcoming podcast. And this ends the very first episode of the Harris English Learning Podcast. Until our next connection, I bid you adieu and wish you all the best in your language mastery journey. <laughs>